Hey guys, what's up? I am Dylan Godino from LaughSpin.com. I'm here in Grand Rapids, Michigan at LaughFest. Sitting next to me, you recognize him. This is Mark Marin. Mark? Hi, how are you, Dylan? Thanks for being with me, buddy. Good, man. It looks like I got some food on my pants, but That's, like way down here. How's kind, that What kind happen? of I don't know. I, what did I you eat? Well, it could have been anything. I don't know when it happened. It was dried and uh, it must have fallen from me yeah. onto the pant. It happens. I know, but it's, you know, I don't know how long it's been there. It is. took someone a long time to tell me I had something on my face last night. Look, folks, if people have something on their face or in their nose, just step up. Yeah. Why let us drag ourselves through that humiliation? What, what do you want? Listen, I, I just want a, a leisurely chat. Uh, this, is, this is how I hang out with, with, with friends, mm -hmm. just on a on couch. On a couch in Michigan, in, in Michigan, front of cameras. In front of cameras. So look this, at those shoes, dude. So this is, yeah, you like those? Yeah. I don't know why I'm telling you to look at them like you'd be surprised by them. Look yeah. at those. Yeah, they're blue. Those are nice. New Balance. New Balance is cool. I don't know. The special New Balance. I don't, are. I don't know what's cool. Why, why do you assume I know what's cool? Well, you're wearing a barrette. Uh, you have blue shoes. This, and this, is not, this is not a barrette. It's a, it's a headband. I'm sorry. I, I'm not up to speed on what things are called. Yeah, headbands are kind of new. <laughs> kind of newly introduced to the... Uh... You look good, man. <laughs> oh, thanks. Man. I'm not going to shit on you anymore. What do you got on your I mind? I appreciate it. First things first, uh, we we met each other uh, years ago uh, when you were in a, I'd say, a much different place. Yeah, you produced uh, the you produced the um, the uh, legendary divorce show. Yeah, that uh, uh, that ran for a week. I felt better, and that was the end of it. Well, it ran for a week. Yeah, it, it ran for a while. It ran for a month, and then you you took it to, to just for laughs in Montreal. Right. Yes, and I dragged some people through that up there. Yeah. I like that show. It would probably be funnier now that I've got some distance on it. But when I was in the middle of it, remember Time Out New York said, the yeah. great thing about Mark's show <laughs> is that he has no hindsight. <laughs> it's as if he's going through it as you're watching him, right. which I was. With, yeah. so, which means there wasn't a lot of uh, craft involved, just a lot of uh, very raw emotion. But uh, boy, uh, those people were lucky. It, it, it evolved mm -hmm. th th throughout, no, it did. throughout that month. I'm very proud of it, and I appreciate you producing it. Um, do you, I mean, do you, do you honestly feel like it's something you can go back to doing? Yeah. I, really? I think that that show, if I was to rework it and to, uh, to find um, where, you, now that I have a little control over the emotions, I certainly, I definitely think it was, it's redoable. I'm not necessarily a sympathetic character. No. Uh, you know, leaving my wife for another woman and then her leaving me. Right. I mean, it's sort of like the character, it's not a heroic journey, it's more of a, like <laughs> he got his journey. Right. Which is, you know, the way life really works. Yeah. In hindsight, you know, adding some of the, the wisdom I would hope I have accrued mm -hmm. since then, uh, it, I think it would definitely be doable. I think it's relatable. Everybody gets dumped and is well, brokenhearted. And, it's definitely relatable. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Interesting. But now uh, the mainstream media has, has picked up... Uh, on, picked on, up on, on, on the, the non-mainstream media on the Marin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that's exactly right. The, the mainstream media is paying attention to these weird capillaries that are forming in people's garages and, yeah. and closets. So you've been, you've been talking a lot more to to people. Have, have you have you gotten sick of talking about yourself? Well, what's interesting as an interviewer is that one of the things you want to try to avoid in an interview is that people have a, a script. They may not be aware of it, yeah. but they have a way of talking about themselves that becomes sort of ingrained because of how much they do it. And I have found that in some interviews I run that script. It seems like the basic narrative of what I've gone through is that he had nothing, he was at the end of his rope, he started this thing with no expectations, and now it's become successful. Right. I'm not tired of it, but... Um, but, it, but it's interesting to, to broaden the conversation. I don't want to be one of those people where it's sort of like, here are my talking points. It's just that there's more interesting things to talk about now that uh, things are evolving. Yeah. Not only are you doing uh, the podcast and you're still, you're, you're, you're earnestly touring uh, the country, uh, you've also, uh, you've just submitted your, your book. Yeah. Correct? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it's a book yet, but it's a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a there's titles mm -hmm. on top of you know a bunch of words right that are essays now the shaping of the book comes you know okay. it was a difficult year to write because i was just more busy than i ever have been yeah. and and things are are very different for me uh mentally and emotionally and career wise and now in my mind the real work begins with my editor because i don't know how people write but it was weird yeah, I, the book is you know, memoir essays and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff I'm thinking about and whatnot. And I, uh, I did the deal and then I, I sent the first essay to my editor and he sent it back with notes. And I'm like, 
what am I in college? I can't do this with every essay. So I, I took the approach of like, I'm just gonna write everything and then just send them a digitized pile of words. And, uh, and then, I, then in my mind, that's when we really start to shape the book. And they were okay w with, with you dictating the process like that? Well, I mean, I don't know if they were okay or what, but I don't think that's unusual. Okay. I mean, you, you're really just working towards a deadline, and, and I believe he's a good editor, and, and I think it's a more exciting way to do it. I just couldn't deal with the insecurity right. because, I mean, with a guy like me, four essays in, depending on what the notes were, I'm, I'd be like, fuck it. Right. You know, this is crazy. I, I can't do this at all. Right. And I don't want to argue points. So now I figure, the best thing that can happen is, is he says, well, let's get, a, let's get rid of these 30,000 words. Right. So we've got leeway and hopefully we can shape stuff. So let's see if he <laughs> steps up as an editor and we make this into something great. I have a feeling uh, somewhere along the process, the dread will, will come back. If I, I think if, so. If I know you. Well, I think so. The issue really now is because of, of my, my podcast and of my standup, and you've known me a long time, I, I'm pretty transparent for the most part, and I, and I speak fairly candidly and honestly about myself. I, I mean, you only have so much life, and if I'm not gonna make up shit, it, you know, some things are going to be themes that I talk about. Sure. But I mean, in all of those mediums, they're, they're very different in the way you approach them and the way they're, they're put together. And uh, so that, that's sort of exciting. I'm, I'm also nervous that he's gonna write me back, my editor, and go, yeah, this is nothing like we anticipated, and, and I don't think, well, you should just give us our money back. Can they do that? They can't do that. No. Yeah, I get, <laughs> no, they can't because I turned it on time. Yeah, they have to get, ah. I, I get to keep the money that right. I got. No matter what you send them. Right, right. You yeah. sent them a pile of garbage. Yeah. Well, that's as long I, as it was yeah, on time. That's what I did. That's what I called the file. <laughs> <laughs> pile of garbage yeah. dot DOC. <laughs> exactly. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Is it? Is there? I was excited about it. Look, I, I don't want to underplay it. Like I am not that disciplined enough to to. Okay, I'm going to sit down every day and look at that blank page. But there were moments where you know, where panic came in, and uh, also just sort of like inspiration, where I was excited to write. So I let that happen. You know, I had the time. I really thought that I didn't write it, but going back on what I did write, I was like, this is. I, I'm okay with this. You know, I'm happy with it. Yeah. Uh, my issue with writing was really. I don't want to overwrite. Yeah, you know, I'm an English major. You know, I'm a poetry fan. You know, there's I have secrets, and like you know, I can be over elaborate. You know, and 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 sort of you know poetic. You know, and, and generally, you know, they they want a funny book and a thoughtful book. Mm -hmm. They don't want me, you know, trying to be, you know, something I'm not. But when you write, it's very easy to sort of like get off on like, oh, right. look at that. That's very lyrical. It's not important if it makes sense or sits on the page. <laughs> right. And I had to fight that in the sense that like I'm just going to write how I think, and that's it. A week after my wife left me, I started writing a journal. Yeah. And when you're writing like that, to you know, to you know, sort of keep your sanity and make sense of things in in a very it, it kind of like immediate way. Yeah. The way it reads is is wild, you know, because it's like there's so much, you, you know what I mean? You're not thinking. You're right. like, I need to do this. She did that, and and this is how it made me feel. So I've included, I included some of that in the okay. manuscript, like a week or so of that first week. I couldn't include more than that because it just became the spiral right. of, of the arc was like, you know, I deserved it. No, I didn't. Who's she fucking? I deserved it. No, I didn't. Who's she fucking? You know, and, and then it just kind of, uh, you know, a year of that. Right. But it's not, it's not heavy handed. Like I have a problem with books where it's just sort of like, and then this happened and it hurt me. You know, I, I tried to, you know, I think about things in a broad sense and then I sort of integrate the personal stuff in there. Right, right. Am I making sense? No, not at all. No, you are. Okay. Absolutely. But I, I think the, the big lesson to be learned is like, if you get your ass handed to you, you probably needed it back. <laughs> okay. I think that's, that's positive. It is. Right? Well, yeah, because, you know, you go through life sort of, you know, self-centered and full of, you know, ego and full of, like, you know, uh, arrogance that usually comes out of insecurity. But when you are humbled for real, however it comes, you know, God forbid it's sickness, you're better off with heartbreak. It's a gift because then all of a sudden you have a perspective on yourself. Yeah. Because when you live in your head and you're like, you know, you have an idea of yourself, you don't know who you are until you overcome right. pain. Right. For real. Not just sort of self-pity, but sort of like, what the fuck am I going to do? And then all of a sudden you get smaller and you get a little softer and, you know, you become a person. Yeah. Isn't that hilarious? That is, that is hilarious.
Yes. I'm just rambling. See what you did? That's okay. We got a different interview here. That's all right. We're, we're gonna good. do. We're get, we're gonna get. We're gonna we're gonna make it fun right now. Good. Is there questions? Is this like a quiz kind yep. of thing? That yep. You... That's exactly what we're doing. <laughs> That's exactly what we're doing. I've been asking all the comedians uh, some kind of some, some rapid fire questions apropos of nothing. Free association kind of thing. Uh, kind of. Okay. So here we go. Yes. The first question, Mark. Mm -hmm. You are currently your favorite smartphone application. I don't use them. Um, that was, I'm hitting a buzzer. Uh, really? You don't use any application? Dude, I, you know, I don't, look, I, I got a lot of things going on in my head. Um, you oh, do? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know why people get into it. Let's look at my apps. I don't really even have any. That's, it's tragic. Uh, well, Twitter. I, Twitter is my favorite All right, so then you're, you're, thing in the world. I, I agree. I think Twitter is the best thing to happen to the internet. I, ever. I, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. All right, uh, moving on. Your worst habit? Picking at my neck. Okay. Why is that so bad? Why can't you pick at your neck? Why can't a guy pick at his neck? If you because you don't, you know, you, you're really, most people are trying to not get that thing. That oh, happens. Oh, the, the turkey neck thing? Yeah, so yeah. like this can't help it, but I nervously do this. Yeah. But, and nicotine lozenges, but I love them. So, but I would say it's probably not good for me. I drink, you know, pots of coffee a day. Yeah. That's probably not good. Um, I, yeah, those are the worst I'm dealing with right now. Okay, all right. We can work through those, mm -hmm. me and you together. Good. Um, the one website, uh, uh, minus Twitter and, and the social media sites, the one website you have to go to each day. I don't go to any websites each day. Okay, really? Dude, I don't know where people find the time. I mean, you know, I'm busy on Twitter. And, uh... <laughs> All right, so we'll leave it, well, Twitter. I, I, I'm with you. Okay. Your favorite sexual position? Um, seriously? Yeah, if you're a I like, pussy. I like being, like, uh, on top, sort of on my knees-ish, with, with their legs kind of, you know, pushed way back, mm -hmm. you know, where you're kind of holding their legs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Yeah. A lot of leverage. You get yeah, a lot of that, leverage. You know, so it's not missionary because you're up. You know, and sometimes it's like you, it's like a modified missionary. Well, you're, you're up. You're up. You're up. Yeah, and then you move into missionary, and then like sometimes you can like kind of grab them under their hips and you know pull them up like right. that. I like that. That's nice. Too oh. much detail, right? Did anyone no. else go into that much detail? See, this no. is my problem. Yeah, too much information, guy. Well, I could have just said well, one everybody thing. Everybody knows you have no boundaries. Yeah, I like that, and I like. Um, uh, behinds from behinds good with mm -hmm. some, if you get if you got a good pace going um, but also like wrapped in in a, in a very tight missionary to where you know you just meld with the other person that's good mm -hmm. too much information. nobody's given three of mm -hmm. their favorite positions you're the first to do that mm -hmm. you want to go for fourth they're all good they're all good. yeah if you know if you can inside yeah if it's not too much effort to maintain the position to where it distracts you from the job at hand mm -hmm. or the task at hand right they can all work out so mix it up just you know don't lose your momentum because you're trying to hold on to a position right yeah it's a, it's good advice it's good advice <laughs> to have. finally um yeah when was the last time you cried mark Marin? two days ago uh on the phone with my father i don't think he really realized it He's, you know, he's got his own issues, and I was talking to him, and you know, it was one of those things where it's like, well, look, I know you're being hard on yourself, but you know, I, I, I got a lot of good things from you, despite the fact that uh, there was a lot of bad stuff, and it was one of those moments where you're saying something kind of, you know, honest and emotional. I choked up a little bit, and, he, yeah. and I think he went, okay, good, uh, all right. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't want to get there. He didn't. He no, didn't. he doesn't. He, he only cries when he's in trouble. You know, not, not because we're having an emotional moment. He cries to it. That is too much information. See, I told you we were going to make this fun. It's a blast. Mark, thank yes. you so much. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you nice talking, to see you. as always. Yeah. Mark Marin, of course. I'm Dylan Godino from I Blast do comedy. Room. Yeah, he does. Yeah, just to make that clear. I do stand-up. I've never been better. I like the thing you do on stage when you, um, when you make believe you're having sex with the stool. You, That's my closer. Why really, would you fucking... Uh, I, why would you ruin my closer? I mean, you know. It's I, original too, I, I man. So now other people it, are going to be like, "That's not a bad idea, fucking the stool." God damn it! Dylan. You do it really good, though. Oh, you, he wow. uses all four of his favorite sexual positions. <laughs> it's hard with a stool. It's a twenty-minute bit. It's really good. Uh, Mark Marin, thank you so much. I'm Dylan Gadina from LaughSpin.com. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys. <laughs>